Hello, welcome to Levant TV Headlines. The United States has opened the door to possible tactical discussions with Russia about the war in Syria, as Moscow's deepening military presence raised the prospect of some limited coordination between the former Cold War force. US Secretary of State uh, John Kerry has arrived in London for talks on Syria as well, and on the refugees from the four-year conflict fleeing to Europe. Lebanese television station Al Jadid, which means New TV, has been cleared of two charges of contempt for publishing details of witnesses in the trial of the alleged killers of former Prime Minister Rafi Al Hariri. Israeli police beefed up their numbers in Jerusalem, barring young men from Friday prayers at the Al Aqsa Mosque site ahead of what Palestinian movement Hamas dubbed a quote, day of rage. And the United States announced that Moroccan prisoner Yunus Abdurrahman Shikouri has been repatriated after spending nearly 14 years at Guantanamo Bay as part of a long-running effort to close the military prison in Cuba. And now let's have a look at the top headlines in today's newspapers in the Middle East. Starting from Cairo, the Egypt Independent leads reporting that 17 militants have been killed with 62 suspects were arrested during an extensive security operation that was launched in North Sinai. The paper also reports that Mexico's government demanded that Egypt compensate tourists mistakenly attacked by Egyptian security forces at the weekend in a deadly incident that outraged the Latin American nation. From Beirut, the Daily Star is reporting that the Union of Municipalities of the Mount Lebanon district of uh, Shahar and Gharb al-Ala have agreed to briefly reopen the controversial Nami landfill to, to help end the two-month trash crisis. The paper also reports that MP Ibrahim Kanaan said the Free Patriotic Movement will not accept any agreement with its rivals that undermines the interests of the Lebanese people, hinting that the party may pull out of the national dialogue launched last week. From the UAE, the Khalish Times leads reporting that the Saudi-led coalition targeting Yemen's Houthi rebels pounded the insurgents' positions on Thursday with heavy artillery fire on the outskirts of the central city of Marib, part of their push to retake the capital Sana'a. The paper also reports that King Salman bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has appealed to UN Chief Ban Ki-moon and members of the Security Council for urgent measures after clashes at occupied Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. And now the papers here in London. The Guardian leads this Middle East news reporting that the UN-backed tribunal investigating the 2005 assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafi al-Hariri has cleared journalists of identifying witnesses but found her guilty of contempt of court. The judgment is the first handed down by the Special Tribunal for Lebanon based in The Hague and has raised questions about media freedom and the priorities of international courts in pursuit of justice. The Telegraph leads reporting that a senior Saudi diplomat accused of holding captive and repeatedly raping two Nepali maids at his luxury apartment has left Delhi under the protection of diplomatic immunity, Indian women's groups staged angry protests outside the Saudi embassy on Thursday, demanding that the Gulf Kingdom hand over the diplomat a first secretary. And the Independent leads reporting that a British ISIS member living in Syria has complained about the bad manners of Arab fellow militants he says steal his shoes, eat like children and don't queue. In an online blog, Omar Hussein, a former security guard at Morrison's supermarket here in England who previously lived in High Wycombe, also said other jihadists invade his space, talk loudly when he's trying to sleep and behave like children. And now let's have a look at the top Middle East headlines in international papers. From China, the Global Times reports that CN Foreign Minister Walid Muallim says that there are no Russian troops fighting alongside the CN Army in the war-torn country. In an interview with the state-run television, the head of the CN diplomacy said that Russian presence in Syria is so far confined to military experts and specialists, refuting media reports that Russian soldiers were fighting alongside the CN Army. And finally, from New York, the New York Times reports that the Obama administration has announced the repatriation of a Moroccan man who had been held without trial at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba for more than 13 years. The transfer reduced the detainee population at the prison, which President Obama still wants to close before he leaves office to 115 men. London-based Kabul Council for Advancing Arab-British Understanding this week just had a co-hosting of an important parliamentary screening of a new documentary film, A Syrian Love Story. 
And now we are joined by Amr Dawood, the subject of the film, and later on by Sean McAllister, the director of A Sea and Love Story. Amr, uh, I will speak to you in Arabic because it's easier for you. Shukran ktir innak jita tahki ma'na al-yom. Khabirna shway an al-film wa shu kain daurak taban bil-film al-wathaik li kint fi msharak inta ka'abla al-usra. Taban al-film hi bihki an hayatna ka'aile bi Suriya. Kanat zawjti mu'taqale. Wa kunt ana matloob li nizam al-Suri li patrat ma qabla al-thawra Suriya. Wa kunt matarafat ala shuan makalista kain hek wadai. شون هو مخرج الفيلم هو الفيلم ميكر بعد هيك شون تابع حياتنا بدقة بالتفاصيل إلى يوم بدأت ثورة في سوريا وكنت أنا أحد الناشطين في ساحات من اليوم الأول اعتقلت أنا فبدأ بدأت أحداث حياتنا تأخذ مجرى غريب شوي زوجتي بالسجن وأنا وابني بالسجن مرة ثانية الفيلم بيحكي عن هاي هاي الحالة وبيتابعها لما اعتقل شون ماكاليستر. نعم. عامر just told us that the story is a documentary style film that talks about him in captivity before and later on throughout his release. Now we'll speak to Sean McAllister, if possible, who is also available next to you. So if we could just speak to Sean McAllister now, the director of the movie. Mr. Sean McAllister, before we get into the idea behind the film A Sea and Love Story, tell us about its parliamentary screening this week. Um, we organized a special screening sponsored by um, the Tory MP Nick Herbert um, for, uh, for Parliament, where we showed the film to uh, a number of key politicians, um, members of the House of Commons and members of the House of Lords. Um, it was the first time I've ever done such a thing, and it was extremely useful to bring together sort of influential people and have a very uh, interesting discussion about a way forward with uh, the crisis. Mm -hmm. The crisis in Syria and the crisis in Europe because of Syria. And um, does the film have any political stances when it comes to the situation in Syria between obviously the current uh, rule of uh, President Assad or otherwise the opposition, uh, the so-called Islamic State? Well, it, uh, the filming in Syria had sort of finished before the Islamic State had sort of moved in. But I think if you, it's essentially, oh gosh, these emails are coming in. I don't know. I should have closed that now. I'm sorry. Um, I think it. I'll yes. Answer, um, I'll answer that question again. Yeah. You ready? I mean, if you make a film, uh, I mean, the, the the politics of the film is is the, is the very fact that you make a, a humanistic story about a man looking after his young children whilst his wife is incarcerated, you know, for writing a book. So to that degree, I think it's a human story that looks at the suffering because of a dictator, but it doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't sort of, um, it's not a political polemic, I wouldn't say. And what sort of uh, feedback did you get? Did, did Amr get to engage with people here who sympathized with, with this situation throughout those years? Uh, what was the, what was the the attitude over there? Over where? Uh, about the film after the screening. Well, there've been a number. Of, well, it's always been emotional, really. I mean, every single screening, there's been tears, really, from people, and uh, I think that people completely identify with Amma and Ragda and the family because its portrayal is very humanistic. It's also very intimate, and it's a breath of fresh air, I think, to see a family living, breathing, loving, laughing um, as human beings, very filmed with great intimacy inside the family. It's a mm. really rare, special insight that we, that we seldom see here on the news. Mm. And when it comes to Kabul, the Council for Advancing Arab-British Understanding, uh, do they have an agenda vis-à-vis -vis your production, which is the film and the screenings that I'm sure you are looking forward to? Um, what is their role particularly? Well, they, they, were, they were key in organizing this screening, really. Um, they are all about bringing together uh, British-Arabic relations. And I think that they saw that this film, because of its human portrayal, was an ideal accompaniment for, for, for what they said. Mm. 
Sean McAllister, director of a CN Love Story, hosted jointly with Kabul Council for Advancing Arab British Understanding. Thank you very much for joining us today, along with Amr Dawood, the subject of the film. Thanks for talking to us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for more updates, please visit our website on levant.tv. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.